Ladies and gentlemen, this is the star of the latest Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. Without further ado, let's jump into it and I'll tell you all the rules and everything along the way. The whole story starts when I had to get down into the depth of my storage and retrieve the table that was very, very deep at the back of the whole thing. Just right there. Not that the retrieving of the piece was easy, but well, yeah, in the end, I managed. I managed. So when I had it out on my patio, I had to assess the extents of preparation. So here you can see we've got particle board where we knew that it was chipping off, so that had to go. I guess that wouldn't stay there. This drawer was pretty, pretty okay. Uh, both drawers were sliding very, very well, so that was good. And the table, the top of the table was super scratched, so that needed my attention as well. Plus, you can guess the color, it's gonna be a real, real bleeder. Not to mention the casters were <laughs> busted, so... Yeah, I started thinking if that was actually a good idea, if the whole thing was actually a good idea, but you know me, I was like, challenge is something I really like, yeah, I like a good challenge, so yep, off we go. I got myself a few tools and I started with the prep work. Step one, clean the piece. I use dish soap and some warm water to clean it. Now, you need to know a few things about the challenge and about this particular piece. So, rule number one, find the ugliest piece of furniture. Well, looking at it, definitely that's a yes. Tick on the list, that fits the description. Uh, and another thing is we need to make it sparkle. So, any glossy finish. Uh, gold gilding wax, uh, metallic paint, well, anything you can think of that is sparkle, um, well, you can use it. So that's the, the second thing. And now, about this particular piece, it wasn't intended for this particular challenge. I took it out of my storage, well, probably at the beginning of this year because I wanted to test something on it. And it didn't work out and I actually had no idea what to do with it so it was sitting again in my storage for well yeah already probably seven seven eight months when I heard about what Cody was preparing about this particular edition of the ugly duckling I was like oh my god yeah this is this is something I can finally use this piece for so here we are as you've just seen, the piece was cleaned, the caster was wear off. And what I'm doing here is just calf sanding the whole piece so my primer and paint have something to grip onto. I used wood filler where necessary. And of course, one of the obligatory steps in my prep work, priming. You see the color? If this is not your first video you're watching, uh, you know that this color uh, is definitely, this piece with this color is definitely a bleeder. So we want to make sure that any of this um, dye that is in the, in the wood is not coming through, especially because I was uh, planned to paint uh, the bottom part of the table white. So yeah, can you imagine? That's pink, pure pink for you. <laughs> the primer had its certain spots that I had to fill in with the wood filler again, so I took it out, sanded it, and then when everything was dry, I cleaned the table and used some acrylic varnish. This is um, oil-based varnish, it's not water-based, so you could say it's kind of like shellac um, working here, um, just to seal uh, all these uh, parts that um, that I sanded to make sure that obviously this is not bleeding through uh, on my paint. And then I had this little trouble. I wasn't entirely sure where exactly I want to do um, some coloring. Hello, here you've got Dante 
um, kind of helping me out with that that thing. So I used a piece of color uh, cloth just to um, help me imagine what would it um, look like if I did the color on the bottom uh, shelf. What would it look like with the uh, top shelf colored? And what would it look like if I had top and the bottom? Guess which one I decided on. Well, I decided I was going to go for the top. So I taped the top um, with some plastic and uh, with some tape. Here you see me sealing the, uh, the edge because I was going to do something colorful on the top. And as I told you before, I, I was going to um, paint the rest white. So I wanted a crisp line uh, for that. And uh, here I'm checking if everything is dry and ready uh, for my experiment. Now, what I am intending to do here is to do some uh, paint pouring. I've seen loads of videos of people just pouring paint straight out of the can, moving the table and, you know, creating nice, nice designs on top of the table. So I thought, okay, yeah, I can have this marble top with these colors and everything. Well, you know already that that didn't go well. One of the reasons uh, I think my experiment didn't work out is if you think about the temperature, it's, well, it's Spain, so it's not freezing, but it's, uh, I think this, this was uh, filmed in January, February. So it's still around, I don't know, 10 degrees Celsius here. So pretty much the paint was super thick. It was cold. It was super thick. Um... So that plus probably some other factors I am still not aware of. Well, the result was what the result was. So here we go. You can see uh, that paint pouring straight out of the can. Um, you know, how it looks, what was the reality of it. If you ever wanted to try it out yourself, well, learn from my mistakes. At this stage, I'm still kind of trying to save it, but um, yeah. As you can see, even spraying it with water doesn't really make the paint run. And I'm telling you, there is a lot of paint on the table. I always um, use very, very, very thin coats. So what was there on the table for me, it's like I could paint, I don't know, five or six tables with all that. So, but yeah, you can see it's uh, uh, not working. So as my idea didn't work out, what I decided to do is just to get an even color coat on the top of the table, just getting rid of all the excess of the paint. And well, then I thought I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll figure something out. So as I was trying to think what exactly I'm going to do with the top, I was trying to uh, just focus on some other parts. Uh, here I'm using um, La Pajarita, the uh, chalk paint La Pajarita. Uh, and the color is pure white. So it's the whitest, whitest white they've got. And... Uh, as I said, while I was trying to work on the bottom part, which was clear for me what I was going to do, um, I was waiting for inspiration to, to strike, which took several, several months to, <laughs> to do. But, well, as they say, better late than never. When the top was finally dry, I noticed this red... A uh, pinkish line as you can see it here. This is the bleed through uh, From the tabletop uh, Well, I had to address that one. I used my acrylic uh, spray varnish to uh, To just take care of it and I was still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do and uh, 
yeah it took me quite some time so basically it took me several days just to decide like okay i have no idea let's get it out of my living room uh, i don't know what to do about it um when i get some inspiration then i'll deal with it so this is where i got before the actual challenge and then the day finally came so last week i dug the piece out i put um i think three yeah three coats of white paint and i noticed um several spots that i had to um i had to uh work a little bit on because i don't know if you could see the texture on this piece there's it's got uh, quite a lot of texture so i wanted to smooth it out a little bit that's uh that's com comes from the paintbrush plus as you can see here there were a few drips so i wanted to address that um do all the necessary touch-ups before uh going for the top now you need to forgive me of uh, losing some footage uh, and I lost footage where I am blending some paint uh, on the top. So I'm using darker shades uh, at the outer part and lighter in the center. And now I'm taking um, the stencil by Amelie, uh, Amelie Breguet. And I am going to uh, use this stencil, this Damask, sten Damask stencil, with gold metallic paint here on the top of the table. I'm using here a brush to brush it on. Um, out of my experience, when you uh, stencil something with a brush, then uh, that thing, that stencil is not gonna be very even what I want to say uh, you will have some um, some the paint will go will go under your stencil and the stencil is not going to be very even but that was my intention I didn't want crisp lines on the top I wanted that to be a bit uneven a bit a bit um, uh, I didn't want it to be perfect okay if I were going to um, uh, have a perfect stencil then I would use a roller okay out of my experience again roller is the perfect thing to have the perfect lines with a stencil we just need to make sure that this pencil the stencil is held very well to these uh, to the surface you're stenciling on and then uh, you kind of like uh, dry brushing with your roller and then you've got very very nice stencils but as I said here, I wasn't going for that. And I covered the whole table with this particular stencil. Now, you need to know that my first idea was to um, make it totally uneven and have only a tiny bit of that stencil stencils on the top. So I wanted to go for the left top corner with a bit of the stencil and the bottom right. Now, I was super, super lucky because... Um, when I did what I planned, I didn't like the idea. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna cover the whole top. And uh, I was so, so lucky because I had a piece of the stencil on one side, piece of a stencil on the other side, but the whole thing went super even. So joining this part of the stencil and the other part of the, sten of the stencil went uh, seamless okay you can't see the difference you 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 absolutely don't know where was one part and one was the other part so as I said I was really lucky another bit I um, lost okay another footage uh, I lost was using that same metallic paint to uh, paint the uh, top edge of uh of the table you see me here already taking the tape off and preparing for the varnish yeah there's definitely something oddly satisfying in, in peeling the tape off i don't know maybe it's just the um feeling that oh i'm finishing is just uh, the project is coming to an end and 
I will be able to to finally see my creation. So maybe that's that's the thing. For the top, I used uh, three coats of uh, the clear top coat in uh, satin. I really wanted, you know, all those uh, metallic parts to um, to be a bit brighter. Plus, um, those blue colors, they look really, really, really nice with satin finish. So I thought, okay, that's going to go with satin. However, I thought that I am going to use matte finish, okay, uh, for all the white parts. I thought that doing um, doing it this way would make all the shiny parts pop. So I was creating with the matte finish, I was creating background uh, for the shiny parts uh, to pop. And then, because I, you know, remember what Katja usually says that, you know, there's not enough, there's never too much of gold. So I'm using this uh, golden um, gilding wax. Uh, the color is very, very similar to the edges I was using on my piece. Um, well, the thing is, I was, I wasn't, I haven't told it through, okay? Uh, I was pretty pressed for time uh, because I had some personal issues and this video is already really, really late for, for the deadline. So I just wanted to just, okay, let's get it there, mm, take some photos and that's it. Just stage it and, and, and sort it out. So here you've got a little before and here's the after. I am in love with the top. I really like the hardware. However, in general, this is not my best piece. Okay, I admit that this is not my be best piece. And there is still room for improvement. However, I had a really, really, really good time creating this piece. And I uh, would like to say again, thank you very, very much, Corey, for hosting yet another edition of the Ugly Duckling. And guys, I see you in the next one.